it's it's too early for cows. It's too early for cows. It's not even fall yet. It's 90 degrees every day. I don't care if it's October. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Monday. You see, you see the swather over there? It's been it's been parked in the field since Thursday. Had the uh, hydrostat go out again. Well, I guess I can't say again because I really don't know what they've done all the other times. This is about the fifth time we've had to have them come out and work on that hydrostat this summer. And apparently the new guy that's working on it is finding a lot of things wrong with it because they've got all kinds of stuff on order. It's just... It's been fun. I didn't know we were little bailing that. All right. Make some more little bales. But because we needed to swath pretty bad, I called Deer, convinced him, hey, we, we desperately need a loaner. Unfortunately, because it delayed everything a full 24 hours, because I waited 24 hours after the swather broke down to call Deer all, hey, I gotta have a swather to get some stuff done. It screwed up our timeline and we're not cutting near what we wanted to cut. And then the water shows up early. We turn on water today. We were hoping it wouldn't be till about Wednesday or Thursday because we got hay down everywhere. We don't have an acre of wheat planted, let alone the drill hooked up. Yeah. Oh, chopper number two. Chopper number two. Good news. So we re-pulled transmission pump, as you can see. You know, it goes right here. Mounds up right there. So, in doing so, we, when I say we, Barton Glenn, built all these covers for all the ports, put a little bit of oil in it and pressured it up, and oil started coming out of the seal. So we finally found our problem. Something is wrong with this shaft. It'll move. And Bart says if you use a hammer, it goes even further. But when that shaft moves back, it lets the seal move back, and then oil can just come right around the seal. So we finally found the problem. Finally. Now we just gotta wait on a new pump. I'll bet they give that away for like 20 bucks. I suppose though, first thing I ought to do is go grab a baler real quick. Bail them ends out of Bart's way. And then start working on a chopper. That's right, we're back to chopping today. Maybe we can finish harvest this week, that'd be nice. Mass confusion to start our Monday. That's the only way to word it. So Glenn just took over a baling for me. Yes, that's an ugly bale coming out the back. That's still the feed from last week. We haven't baled since Thursday. So Glenn took over for me. Hector just took off with the other baler. Cameron's going to get started on tillage. Bart's in a little baler. Blanca just took off in a rake. We're, <laughs> we're covering acres. Let's just put it that way. So today's project, I'm going to need that guy. That was a great parking spot. I'm the one who left it there. Go and hook this one. Drag that trailer out and get that one hooked up. Here we go, 23 foot wide, going down the road. Stay out of my way. Have fun working on the VT, Cameron. I'm sure it was greased the day it got hooked up. You won't have any problems getting it ready for a couple long days. You can't tell my, by my voice, that is one billion percent sarcastic. We, we've got a track history around here. You run equipment until it's falling apart trying to get done you unhook it to get started on the next project you never work on that piece of equipment then when you hook it up and really need it the next time you spend a day working on it to get it ready when you needed it running for a full day so that VT they got parked this spring and this fall it got hooked back up actually I think it's hooked up all summer but either way if we didn't use it all summer we get to the fall, they grab it, go disc ends, 
but it never got a lick of maintenance. So now that we need it to work a couple hundred acres in the next 24 hours, it's time for maintenance. Some things never change. I'm guilty of it too. This is this is a hell of us we. We're moving along. 40 acres here. So this first job, local cattle producer, wants 500 tons. I rode around the home yesterday. Found all their fields that are worth cutting. We're just gonna start here, work our way to the west until we hit 500 tons. Which, as you see, it's not gonna take long. It's it's not a record crop by any means, but it's good. It's green. It's moisture running now. 65% average. Perfect. So round and round we go. This is the part of harvest I absolutely hate this time of year so waiting is always part of harvest it's never fun but this time of year it really really bugs me because we have so much to do on the farm side to just be sitting here waiting drives me nuts so when i left this morning blanca was raking bart hector glenn were all on balers cameron is trying to get to what you going the tuna and I think I seen Aaron are getting the cattle fed and doctored and everything. And I'm sitting here doing nothing for most of the day and it, it drives me nuts. I understand why because I'm the one that goes and meets with, like yesterday, I rode around with Colton for two hours looking at fields, looking at driveways, coming up with a plan. These trucks, we're just using custom trucks. They all text me all the time, you know, hey, what's the plan, what's the plan? So it makes sense for me to be the guy on the silage crew. When we got so many things at home, I would rather be there because I feel it's more efficient for me to be there than sitting here. So the other super frustrating part, and this has been building for a little while, is we aren't ready for planting wheat, let alone irrigating wheat. Normally, what happens is as soon as we start chopping, manure starts getting spread. A lot of things have kind of screwed with that timeline to where we've got almost no manure spread. Then in turn, we didn't even start ripping until Friday. Cameron's got a whopping 40 acres ripped. That still needs Colts packed and the Smizer ran across it to smooth it up, the big land plane, before we plant it. And ideally that's what I like to do for our wheat because I've seen the yield difference in actually prepping the ground versus just drag the VT across it and plant it. Last year, and the drier it gets, the more drastic that difference is. So like last spring we were dry and to say it was a night and day difference where we did two fields side by side, it proved to me that, yes, I I don't like doing that much tillage because I know we're breaking down organic matter faster. We can dry out the soil by doing that. But I also seen the yield difference. Kind of six and one half dozen in the other. You just VT it and go, you save a whole lot of money on fuel and wear and tear on your tillage equipment, but you're also going to have a much lower yield. So is your return per dollar spent better or worse by doing the full tillage? But I mean, every, the, whole, the whole fall has just been screwed up. I don't, I don't want to say what I want to say because, come on. YouTube will get mad if I cuss too much. I've noticed that. When I when I upload videos, I have to go through the, what is it, the automatic checks I have to go through and select, you know, am I using inappropriate language or talking about all this and that. And so I've been trying to catch myself a little bit. I know I don't cuss much, but I'm trying to make sure I keep it down so that way I don't piss off YouTube. Um, but, you know, I've I talked to our agronomists, we're getting soil samples on every bit of open ground we have so we can better utilize our manure. Because in the past, it's always just been, well, we didn't manure last year, let's manure it this year. What are we going to put on? Ah, just 20 ton. 
That's kind of the average that everyone puts on around here, just 20 ton. Well, where we've got our own manure spreader now, and it's got a scale, and I can, at the push of a button, change the rate, and it'll automatically adjust to whatever speed I'm going, we can be a lot more precise with our manure, make it go further, but then we're not putting on as much, so you're gonna have to do it more often. So I wanted everything soil sampled. We're waiting on soil samples to come back, so we don't know for sure yet if we got ground that doesn't need manure, that we could have been ripping, that we could have been prepping, and just, ah! That's a part just called, he goes, hey, uh, trying to get this drill set up. What, what seed slot do I put in? I'll just put it on the big one for the wheat setting, which I think is wide open for wheat. Um, I go, and then you'll have to go in and change all the calibrations in the computer, and he pause. He goes, well, I'll call you back when I get that far, because uh, I don't know how to change any of that without reading the book for an hour. So now i got to try and remember off the top of my head while I'm doing this how to do that. See, and that just goes back to I wish... I wish I was doing something else. Well, there's Christian coming back. We've, we've done two rounds of trucks, so we're somewhere between 160 and 200 ton. So by the time we get this field done, we're gonna be over 300. So I'm thinking two more fields, because this is the biggest one. This is a 40 acre circle. Everything after this is flood ground. And I'm thinking the two flood fields that are kind of over near here might be enough to just finish this pit and then I don't know if I'm gonna switch heads and go try the other neighbor's pit so we got this job squirrel sorry about that I started thinking about the wheat drill while I was trying to talk to you and I just completely went blank um so we've got this job to finish he wants 500 ton like I just said we're 160, 200 ton in, somewhere in that range. The next job is just 30 acres for the guy's pit. And then we have a 25 acre field and a 10 acre field that we never irrigated, but got a little bit of wastewater on it. It's a flood field. So if we irrigated the field above it, there's some spots that grew, so it needs cleaned up. But the tuna was also talking about we would cut all of that as green chop, meaning just two loads a week and feeding it and not touch the pit anymore. One, because green chop feeds really, really good. But two, it would slow it down enough to where we could have chopper number two put together and have it do it so we can make sure it works. Because the last thing we want is to be all done and not know if that chopper is actually fixed or not. Another phone call. It's funny, here it is a couple minutes later. Now I know where when I when I lost track of where I was going and the wheat popped in my head. It's because my brain was sitting here going, well, what the hell does it matter whether we do tillage or not? This drought we're in and the drought they're predicting, it's all gonna die this winter anyways, so we are we are not looking good in our long-range forecast. There is a La Nina starting to set up, which for us means dry. Dry, dry, dry. <laughs> the long range models I've been looking at aren't looking promising for any signs of even average moisture until the spring. So our wheat, it, it's going to have to cling on for dear life and hope it gets just enough moisture to get it through the winter. We'll irrigate it now. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get another shot of irrigation come the first part of November before the canal shuts off. And then it'll have to just survive. So. We'll see. Back to chop and chop. I got the first field done. Had to call an audible on the second field though, so taking a shortcut and just going right down the highway. Save about four miles of driving. There's nobody back there. It's fine. It's fine. I love a field find. Freaking five foot long T-post. Thank God it was laying down. Behind every good chopper guy, 
There's a guy like Trevor making him look better than he actually is. <laughs> that field is done. And you know what that means? That pit is done. Guys, we only have one more customer's pit to go. And then our own. But that's that's a different story. One more customer's pit to go. I'm going to switch heads. It's 2.30. We are getting done today. With the other guys, not our own. You know what I mean. Headers are switched. Aaron's grinding corn. Clark and Glenn are in the shop. Maybe, maybe putting chopper two together. Cameron's got the VT. The one neighbor's picking up small bales. Hector and Blanca are picking up big bales. Just getting things done. Just wish we could get more done. It's never ending story. All right, let's go knock out one last custom field. One last custom field. This cutter is gonna be yellow. Look at this Milo dust flying. It's just a fog bank. And for some reason, the arm out there on the end of the header keeps falling. Makes me wonder if that leak is finally really a leak. Or if my valve went bad, or... Oh, maybe I didn't hold the button long enough when I set the header up. I don't know. Lots of negotiating around. As you can see, Christian had to turn and then back out of the field. The driveway to the road is super tight. I gotta get all the way down in the bar pit to hook it hard enough to get in. Yeah, I just said the phrase, hook it hard enough. Get over it. Moving on. Just had a uh, slightly... Well, I mean, if you really think about it, it's a terrifying moment, but in this case, it's just a disconcerting moment. Uh, the truck went to make a turn at the end, and the one tire didn't turn. The tie rod broke. <laughs> he was laughing. He goes, yeah, I had it in the shop and was telling him, you know, it's wearing the tires on. So they put new bushings at the end of the spring, but apparently didn't check the tire rods. Um, it's not too bad, though. We were able to cobble it together in the field. So I can just limp it back home the four miles. Not a, not a huge deal. It's empty dirt roads. So hopefully get back there all right so we can get put back together properly. So now I've just got to finish this with three trucks. And I'm going to say I've got know, probably five, six loads to go yet. So not too bad. Quarter till five. It's going to be real nice. It's always kind of odd. The last day, the last field, the last round, when you start telling people, hey, it's your last load for fall. And you know some of these guys, you won't see them again until May. That's weird. You deal with them every day for 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day for these two months. And now you won't even see them until May. Yeah, find that odd. One load left. One load left. Hurry up, Christian. I'm tired of waiting. There it is, guys. That pass we've been chasing for two months. The last one. Easily gonna fit on Christian's truck. Done. Like I said, we're, we've still got clean up. Oh, that's a Packer man. Now you're the last load. We are done. That sounds good. As I was saying, we've still got clean up to do around home. But the plan right now is to chop that over like the next three weeks. Just leave that pit alone. It's already fermenting. Don't touch it. Just chop what we need as we need so about two loads a week until it freezes and we have to chop it whatever's left but by then it won't matter for all intents and purposes silage harvest 2024 the un done look at old cameron just to plant in the way two more passes you're almost done 
So that's kind of the next big project, guys. Get some wheat in the ground, get it irrigated with this water while we got it. So the VT is now our primary tillage for the time being. I don't know why I'm pointing the camera at me. You can't see me. Got a half circle right here that's raked, ready to go. That'll be tomorrow morning's baling project. I am not looking forward to getting up and doing that. But just for funsies, might drag you guys along for the ride. It'll be it'll be a blast. All right, guys, time to go home. See how the kids' day at school was. Check in with you tomorrow.